Welcome in. It is day 49 and you're speaking with the Meeples Champion. Today we're going to be jumping into a smaller game. This is a two-player specific game and that game is called Patchwork Express. Patchwork Express is a game that I was introduced to about four to five years ago. Uh, it was when I first joined my new game group and we were starting to get together and when we would meet everybody kind of showed up a little bit off from each other so you know up to an hour between the first to the last person that got there so we would constantly have these little games that we were playing in the room one of them that got brought in eventually was patchwork express it led me to end up buying the game on my own and it is just such a great concept of a quick simple little game you're basically just making a quilt and you have to patch it so the idea is that you have all these pieces around in a circle and one piece that slowly moves them you put it down and now for your board you go okay i'm going to move or i'm going to buy one of the next three pieces in front of this this meeple that's out in there when you buy it based on whatever you buy you're going to move your piece so many spots and you're going to move that piece out to where that was so if you bought the one directly in front of you you don't move but if you buy the one three in front of the meeple you'll jump in front of those other two and now you move your piece ahead and if your piece is on your individual or your shared board, if that piece is now ahead of your opponent's piece, then your turn is over. But if it is behind them or on top of them, you go again. You keep going until you're in the lead. You're going to constantly be going back and forth. And at the end of the game, the idea of how it works is, is that you're going to get points based on negative for every spot unfilled on your board. And then a point for every single button that you get. The, the pieces you're buying, some of them are going to be having buttons on them. So there'll be payouts for you. And when the payouts come, you buy, you get a button for every button showing on your board. You need those buttons to buy more pieces as well. So it's a real interesting concept of back and forth. So let's jump into our seven categories and really rank this game. Firstly, the art. How is the artwork for this game? I think the art is okay. I do not think that the art necessarily sells this game. Had I not played this with a friend, would I have bought it because of this front art? I don't think so. It's a nice art. I have nothing against the art. But it doesn't necessarily grab me as an art that makes you want to go pick it up. That's not a bad thing in general. I don't think that they were trying to be this you know, overwhelming art and, and get people in there that this game is going to be the next big thing. It's a small game, and that's just how it's designed. So I'm going to give the art a thumbs down, but not because I don't like it, just because I don't feel the art is as good as it could have been, but I do feel it fits the theme. So I have no complaints about the art. I just don't find it to be good enough to give a thumbs up. The components. The components are the boards, and the tiles. You have that one meeple, but it's the boards, the tiles, and, and the money. Everything's cardboard. The components are fine. They are a thumbs up. It, there's, they do their job. They're going to hold up. They haven't worn for me in the last so many years. It's fine. The price. This is a pretty cheap game. You can get this for about $20. You're going to find it in every single Barnes & Noble. You'll find it most likely in every Target. You might find it in Walmart. It's a little bit more questionable there and you'll find it online and in not every board game store board game stores specialize not every there's no board game store that has it all if it is it's called a factory the regular board game stores usually have one or two real things they're after and one of those potentially could be smaller games if you go to a store that has smaller games you'll find this but if you go to a regular store you may find it because it's not just a card game so it could be on a shelf but I'd say out of five, uh, five stores you go to, you're probably in that three range. It's not going to be everywhere. But I think it's a thumbs up on the price. It's not that bad. Difficulty. This is not a difficult game to play. I think that this game is pretty easy to learn. You know, you, you have it pretty much mapped out right in front of you. You know, you're only dealing with what piece do I want to get? Can I afford it? When I do, I have to move this. When I move it, where does it end up? Okay, do I go again or am I done? And that's really it. Otherwise, it's payouts and then it's the end of the game when you when you reach the center. I think it's a pretty easy game to play. I don't think this is going to be hard for entry level. 
and I don't think it's going to be hard for young kids. I don't think it's that hard to play. It's a thumbs up on the difficulty. Replayability. Replayability is, I would say, this is a game that's going to get replayed a lot on the same day, but maybe not a lot in the same month or even year. So if you're talking about beginner gamers or people who really like two-player games, yes, this might be one that's a big one for your house. But if you're talking about the expert levels, if you're talking about the medium levels, if you're talking about people who don't specifically like two-player games, this might be one that you go, okay, I got a rainy day, I'm stuck in the house with my wife, with my mom or my dad, with my sisters or brothers or my friend, and I want to play a two-player game because we have nothing to do. Pull this out and you end up playing it five or six or seven times in a row. I can see that replayability easily. But is this one that you're going to pull out monthly or that often in a year? I think in a lot of collections it will get lost because you're not looking for two-player. You're looking for those four, five, six-player games. Or if you're not into that kind of gaming, you're more of doing a party night, at which point, again, you're looking more for a 10-person game. It's not often that two players really going to be pulled out from most game collections. So I'm going to give it a thumbs down on the replayability, even though I do think if you specialize in that area of you like two-player games, this will be a huge replayability. Keys to victory. It tells you what it is, and it does it. Your keys to victory are cover up the most of your map, or have the most buttons. That's really it. There's not really anything else to do. But it tells you that. And it isn't a setup where if you do one, you can't buy, win by doing the other. You know, if I decide to go after filling my map, and you decide to go after, I'm going to get the most buttons. It's not a guaranteed version that's going to win. It's all up to how did we do it? You know, did you, did you go all in too fast too early, and it caused you to not be able to afford things for a while? Or did I go all in on covering the board, but as a result, I ended up missing out on a lot of buttons and all of a sudden I couldn't buy more. It's all up to a combination of the luck of how it came out and how you really ended up having your, your attack and their attack combined. Unique. Is this unique? I just had a review recently for the original Azul. And I used this game as an example as to why that wasn't unique. Well, mirrored right back to it, because guess what? If it's not unique for Azul because of this, this is not unique because of Azul. It's a tile lane game. It's just a tile lane game. That's all it is. It's, it's a good tile lane game. I find it fun. It's quick. It's enjoyable. But it's tile lane, and there's not really much more to it. It's not unique. You're going to be able to find other games that are able to mimic this enough that you can pick one and say, I want Azul, and that's enough for me. I want Patchwork, and that's enough for me. Even in the Patchwork world, they have multiple of them now. You have This is Patchwork Express, which is the second one. You can get the original Patchwork. They have like a Christmas-themed one. They have a, a Halloween-themed one. Now, to be fair, I haven't played any of the other ones, so for all I know, this is just like Monopoly, and it's just... Uh, it's a name, but it's just a theme plastered on top, and it's the exact same game. Meaning, buy one, and it's all the same thing. I don't know. But there are other games outside of the Patrick world that are enough of what this is to say it's not unique. So overall, what do I think? I like the game. I think that if you have a chance to play, play it. If you like two-player games, give it a shot. Is it a must-own? No. Should you, if you are into two-player games or shorter games or you're beginning, buy this? I don't think you have to. You know, see if you run into a friend who has one and play it. You know, go to a gaming convention. If you see it up on a wall and you have a friend with you, hey, pull it out. Say, let's play a quick 15-minute match. It's not long. You're going to be able to play it to get your opinion. You're not going to waste your day trying to figure out if this is the right game to buy for you. Or just go watch a how-to-play. Some people, like myself, can watch a how-to-play and get enough of a feel for a game to decide if that's a game for them or not. Overall, I think it's a really good game, but make the decision on your own. I don't think you have to play it. I don't think you have to own it. I think, you know, just if you can, give it a try, but not a worry if you don't want to. Overall, I like it. It's in my collection. I won't be getting rid of it anytime soon. Well, this has been day 49. You've been speaking with the Meeples Champion, and we've been talking about Patchwork Express. Like share, subscribe to the channel, and check down below in the description where I'll be adding in a link to Amazon to buy this game. I'll talk to everybody tomorrow.